and the mic's unmuted. We just got here. Just. It's been, um, it's been nothing but working on the house and getting uh, going on the next show, which um, is going to be another one on my story, because I've got a lot of them. I mean, I'm 72 years old, and I've been having these experiences. The early, earliest that I can remember was um, one of them critters looking in my uh, crib. And I, Do I have a picture of that here? And thank you all for being here. Look at you. You're all filing in. Just love you. Um, I think I do have a picture, but if not, I can easily get to it. Um, this picture has been seen over the years. Yvonne uh, Smith uses it a lot in her lectures, and um, it's one of my favorites. If I can find it. Um, no, it should be down here. No, it's not in alphabetical order. Short. My date. No, name. Now I can find it. And, wow. There, ah. I'm uh, wearing my flight coat. It's cold in here. Because we haven't been here. Um, so, this is the one I'm talking about. And um, I did this back in 94, 93. Um, Vaughn asked me to draw it, and she's been using it in her lectures. And I think it's in some of her books. I can't remember. But um, I want to clean this up and run it through AI a bit and get a little bit of movement in it and stuff. I think it'd be kind of fun to do. It'll still be my art, not AIs. It'll just enhance it. So. So, tonight's show, uh, we have, uh, this is a 20-minute one. It's probably the last of the 20 minutes, and I know there's been controversy, and I know that uh, Casey pointed out that she would generally will not watch something that's 10 minutes long because she doesn't think it has enough depth and scope. Uh, I've been told that by other people, very few. Um, and... Because Mary and I have be, be fastly becoming, not experts, but very knowledgeable about how things work on YouTube. And we want this channel to be a success. Um, it is true that 90% of the viewing public will watch 10 minutes, 15 minutes, over an hour and a half. Uh, they want to watch the hour and a half, and they'll, they'll see an hour, or they'll see 40 minutes and say, well, I'll watch this tomorrow but they never do. <laughs> they forget. So at least with the 10, 15 minute show, you got them. They watch it. They learn something. They get more involved. And as time goes by and the channel uh, gets more traction, we get more subscribers. It really opens up things for us. Uh, so down the road, if we want to do some specials now and again, and we'll have a special uh, story about an experiencer or someone involved on the inside, who wants to blow the proverbial whistle, we'll give them time for that. And I know most of our viewers will watch it. So that's kind of how it works. Um, so I'm going to be doing another short one for next week. It might actually go to 15 minutes this time. <laughs> but it'll be a few stories. So, um, But Jim Lowe, or James Lowe, who's written two books and sent 200, 200 copies to Congress, has also had lifelong experiences. And he doesn't talk about them or hasn't talked about them very often uh, on camera. Um, and so this time, within the 20 minutes, he basically gives you a full range from the time he was little all the way up to uh, what's going on present day and the experiences he's had. In addition to being very smart about the UAP UFO phenomenon and trying to, uh, he's very knowledgeable, he's very well researched, and he's trying to help our government prepare for what's coming. And you all know what's coming. So it's already happening. So we, we want the public to be prepared to, to get it into their heads that 
we're not alone and we never have been and it's okay you know it's like discovering new things in nature it's uh you're not going to freak out because you found a new type of life form on our planet it's it's a, a, a wonderful marvelous thing and we want them to embrace that but it has to be done very carefully and that's what his books are about and he's based it all and his own personal experience of how to deal with it so i think you'll find it very interesting uh he and his wife uh, martha wonderful people both of them they came to our studio it's hard for him because he lives way in the mountains up somewhere in orange county and he doesn't get up here very often but he had a chance to get up here and he said steve i want to go in front of your cameras and and, and so he did and he was fantastic so that's what's going on what you're going to see tonight I see there's some new people in here, and I want to welcome you, and thank you so much for, uh, some of you actually came back, and there's Judy. Hi, Judy. And Dope Nose. And uh, so how how's it going with all of you? The show, of course, starts at 6 o'clock, but you have five minutes, because they always, we always use the, uh, the, uh, the run-up thing to give people time to get in there we've had people say why do you do that you know just run the run the thing well you're there but you're assuming everyone else is too and so we try to give that five minutes for people to get in some people are late and they go oh god i'm gonna miss it and they don't because we ran the uh the warm-up and the countdown and it gives everybody a chance and everybody deserves that so oh you're at a wedding, but you did. You you checked in, Judy, and thank you so much. How sweet. Um, we're looking at having you on uh, next Friday, this Friday coming up, if that's uh, amenable. And if I can call you tomorrow, if you send me an email, if your number, I will uh, get a picture and uh, a short bio from you and schedule it and get it up early so people know that uh, to check in and, and hear your your story, which is amazing. So who we got in here tonight? Wow. So base, base hands. Oh, well, thank you, base hands. And, and really glad to uh, see new faces in here. And well, I don't see your face, but you know what I mean? Uh, but it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's wonderful. Um, I have experienced any of these things you talk about, but I was really into this stuff since the 90s. Well, if you're into the stuff since the 90s, you probably remember some long-haired guy that was hanging out with Whitley Strieber, Roger Lear, and Vaughn Smith, and was almost every TV program about the subject. That was me. And all if you watch sightings during the 90s, then all the gray aliens you saw and the effects and the puppetry, that was all my work. So if you saw it. Um, oh, uh, Gnarly Carlson. Hello, Steve. Hello back, Gnar Gnarly. Am I pronouncing that right? Tim? Tim Baker from from uh, Northern California. Well, that's where I'm originally from. I was born and raised in San Francisco, just like Sulu. I was born there. Yeah, I was born in Mount Zion Hospital in San Francisco in 1952. I remember it like yesterday. <laughs> And a lunatic, a lunatic, I guess that's how you pronounce it. You know, give me a break. I'm American. So, you know, we screw up the English language all the time. We've been doing it for a long time. But uh, yes, thank you for being here. It's uh, quite late for you. You're eight hours ahead. So you're at you're one o'clock. So uh, I've got new comments down here. Stars and night vision. Well, hello back. Um, I haven't seen you here before, and uh, maybe I missed when we had a guest on, and there's a lot of Texas going by. I try to catch them all, but it's hard. And, uh, oh, Adam, hello, Adam, you're here. Um, Adam was on our show last night, and you love sightings. Yeah, they were actually, they were very cool to work for, and they were very straightforward, and they didn't make fun of this stuff, and they rarely had skeptics at all. I, in fact, I don't really recall them having skeptics. And they, they treated the subject matter with respect, and, and that was good. 
So I was always happy. I worked for them. And then later on, I worked for the History Channel on a program called the UFO Files. And I did a lot of CGI for them. Eventually, they replaced me because um, they started getting cheaper. And then they wanted me to take a, re a reduction in pay. And I, I wasn't willing to do that. Is there any relationship between, you can call me a loon, Steve. Okay, I will. A loon. A loon, I see. <laughs> but you're not. It's Oh, a lunatic. Oh, I see. A lunatic. Okay, fine. Um, there you go. Bob's your uncle. I was married to a Brit for 33 years, so I do know some of the lingo. <laughs> um, let's see. Jamie. I saw one that, um, oh, stars and night vision. And they will be replaced by AI. I don't know who's going to be replaced by AI, but it's not going to be me. I've been using AI, and you know what? I can do better than it can with Blender, uh, Unreal Engine, and a few other programs that I'm well at first in. Um, I missed one somewhere. Oh, Ann Carter. Yes. Hi, Ann. And I'm going to call Chuck tomorrow. Today just was, it got to be, I barely got here, let alone be able to talk on the phone much today. Uh, is there any relationship between shape-shifting and UFO experience? Yes, definitely. Um, I, I, have you ever read the communion letters? I keep referring to that because the, the communion letters and the rest of the letters are at Rice University where they're in an archive, uh, which is pretty amazing. Um, and they're... There are a few stories in there. One that really sticks out in my mind about uh, a woman that morphed into one of the, the beings. Um, I believe that was the one where the guy was living in an apartment and this, this woman moved in and he, he they kind of had a thing and he fell in love with her and, and towards the end she morphed into the, the book cover basically. Uh, and then disappeared after that, and no one ever remembered her living in the apartment or anything. Uh, it was one of those situations. So uh, there is morphing all the time, as far as I know. So, Oh, you're rereading those letters. It's really a good read. I highly recommend it to all of you to read um, uh, the communion letters. I can hear my voice delayed in the other room, so I can close the door. Um, let's see. Yes, grandkids are coming, Mary. Yes, they are. Asked this before. Since the fresh crop tonight, we're starting dreaming about the visitors again. Well, Pancho, um, we've had dreams, all of us, about them. And, and the, the thing about dreams is, is this. Um, sometimes things happen and they're completely suppressed. You can't remember them at all, but they'll leak out through your subconscious into your dreams and you will experience it just as much as if you were under hypnosis. You will experience a very linear, uh, realistic, vivid experience with the grays. And it's very convenient that most people you might work with who would think you're a little off would say you're just having dreams. That's how it works it, to me. It's, none of this is factual. I mean, this is what I've experienced. This is what I know. And um, it doesn't mean it's set in stone, but I sure believe that's how it works when it comes to the dreams. Hi, Steve. I'm 72. So, oh, at, hi, Steve. At 72. I'm 72 now, Robert. A uh, long time experience. I live in Crater Lake and uh, not Shasta. I see a lot of UAPs and love to talk sometimes. Well, sure. Um, I spent a long time up in uh, Bernie, California. Um, what else did you say? Oh, yeah, there we are. And I worked on a movie called The Crater Lake Monster, but we never actually went to Crater Lake to shoot it. Oh, we shot a local lake. It's one of my first movies I ever worked on. Uh, Brimstone. You, you, awesome show. Interesting. Do you think we will develop technology to detect their presence? I don't know that we need it, but uh, uh, usually when they appear, um, I know that, um, okay, Roger Lear gave me a Gauss meter, 
And when I stayed, uh, there was a little conference in, um, in uh, oh God, what's, it, what's the place called? It's it's up here near Camarillo. It's where Moore Park, not quite Moore Park. I'm, I'm drawing a blank, but it's in that general area. There was a UFON meeting there that was for, for uh, a day and a night. And Whitley was there as a speaker. And Whitley stayed in the uh, hotel room above me. I was one of the speakers. And of course, I was below him. And when I went in there, I used my Gauss meter and the thing was off the charts over my bed, especially uh, and around the room in the bathroom. And of course, that night, nothing would do that I didn't have an experience. And I had marks on my back and burns down my spine that Whitley and, and Ann Strieber observed. I felt terrible. Uh, I did do a little bit of drinking that night, but it wasn't from that. I was just so miserably hungover. And when I tested with the Gauss meter the next morning, um, there were there was nothing. It was just completely quiet. So I don't know, but the, the Gauss meter is capable of detecting um, changes in magnetic field uh, and I think electrical energy. I'm not. It's been a long time since they used one, so I forget. Someone here will correct me, I'm sure. Um, so, yes, there are, there is technology that can detect that something is there and something's going on. So it's the same stuff they use for detecting ghosts because the two are related. Oh, did, well, yeah, kind of, although I was up, you know, quite often checking with the rain because we did get flooded and you know it's it's you know, the house is beautiful again and you just here it is pouring rain in the middle of the night same way it was the night that that happened and so you have a tendency to keep getting up checking your phone looking at radar and seeing how bad it is and we were fortunate that the rain was pretty light the whole night and wasn't what they said it was going to be so that was a good thing so yeah i'll get a better night's sleep tonight because it's not going to rain okay we got more and thank you for asking. And I got a scratch in my ear. So you, you Pancho, you're talking about the uh, the dreams. Um, for years, for years, but one of the uh, oh, you're talking to someone else. You know, dreams. Let me start back with a significant difference in tone. You know, how is the tone different, Pancho? I mean, my tone is different from what it was back in the 90s because it is, and, and, and it's much more about how precious life is and how badly we're destroying it here on the planet and how we have to stop or we will be stopped. That's what I've been getting, and it's not going to be nice. because we're supposed to take care of this place, not destroy it in the name of greed and money. And although some people are just making a living so they can put food on the table and they have a comfortable life, and that's fine. There are other people, fewer in numbers, with all the nuts, trying to harvest the place and turn it into a dead world, and they don't care. And that's where the concern lies. That's what I'm getting. So, and they think they're very powerful. They think they're elite. They think they're above us. And they think that that power they have is real power. They have no idea what real power is, but they, uh, it might be that they're going to find out real soon. Yeah, we need peace. Ann Walker, yes, I have. Yes, exactly. Return in different is now. It's unlike before each dream, they are clearly here and their presence is known. Uh, yeah, and it's getting more known every day. And what we're trying to do here, all of us, not just breaking the silence, but all of us collectively, is we're trying to bring all this to the forefront uh, to take the stigma away and, and get people comfortable with the idea, you know. Um, yeah, I, I have heard of her, her book, a uh, little one message to the head. Yeah, uh, Ann, Ann Walker, uh, Mary, write down her name and, and thanks. 
a, a lunatic. <laughs> I love that. That's great. Um, <laughs> we did do the nose. Anyway, um, Rusty says, oh, I hope so. Uh, for peace? Or getting these uh, people who think they're powerful to take a back seat? Breathe the air. Go look at the trees. Love, love the sun rising. Look at the stars at night. Can you imagine those people ever doing that? But if we do, maybe they will. So we should imagine it. Because what we think we create, that I'm told too. And we have these powers. And, and Adam and I talked about it last night. And um, they lay dormant. Again, from these people who say, the, the rich and powerful who say, none of that stuff makes any sense. It's all crazy talk and you don't have any powers and there's no UFOs and there's no ghosts and there's no life after death. It's just a miserable existence here on earth. So grab and snatch everything you can while you can because you're dead. You're just worm food. Thank you, Mr. Tyson. That That's inspiring. Imagine if everybody realized that when they, this body stopped functioning, they didn't, that they went on, how would that change things here? Because everybody seems in a, in a big hurry and out for themselves uh, to grab all the nuts and push other people out of the way. And because there's no time, you're only going to live for so long and then you're just worm food. And as I said in my film, uh, the dream time, that's when Hitler tells him, he says, they told the people this, but they had no proof of it. They have no evidence. They have no evidence that when you cease to exist in this physical body, that you don't continue as a spirit. None. But they tell us that anyway. All these respected, PhD, learned people, they should say that's what they believe or that's what they, they that based on their scientific study, they think might happen, but they're very, very absolute about it. And, and there's a lot of people watching these guys and talk about feeling hopeless. Um, well, yeah, they, Poncho, they don't want us to think. The last thing they want people to do is think for themselves, have critical thinking, be rebellious, and question everything and take it apart and say, why does this work the way it does? I'm not going to take your word for it. I'm going to look into it myself and learn about this and be informed. And then make decisions based on that. They don't want that. Get in your cubicle. Do what you're told. And uh, we'll give you a carrot. Yeah. Well, uh, Dana, I know that for sure. Because I had the experience. And I know for fact. Because someone who loved me very much when they passed away came and showed me what's going on. And by the way, I didn't know she was dead. She died during the night. So none of us did. And she was very young. Uh, so. So we see, oh, there's more. Wait, there's more. Oh, there's, no, that's okay. Well, you guys are bringing up some great stuff tonight. Absolutists are often outlived. Hmm. Yeah. They are. Oh, hi, Catskins. You're here. I'm just looking through. Uh... Oh, Tim Baker, have you heard of? Yes, I've heard of, 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 of Glad So Said So. And. Mm hmm. What an experiencing has been interacting with NASA as well. He's been interacting with NASA. It's interesting. That's very interesting. So I've never, I, I know people who work for NASA. I don't know if that means I'm interacting. One of them fixed my toilet at a party here at our studio one night. Another one, um, she works in the department that uh, takes care of wildfires, if you know what that is. If you've ever seen the Andromeda strain, that was a special facility that dealt with wildfires, meaning that anything brought back from space, our, our, our spacecraft that bring back 
samples from space and stuff, they are very carefully handled in case they bring something back here that would wipe us out. And I know the lady who's actually does that. So uh, I've, I've known, I, I've been so fortunate to meet and know so many people uh, in Hollywood and in, in, in NASA and, and things like that. I mean, even um, some of the greatest photographers that ever lived, like Ansel Adams, who I used to have dinner with all the time when I was a kid. Um, but probably one of the biggest highlights besides knowing well Ray Bradbury was Gene Roddenberry. So, uh, let's see. Trying to look through these. We usually cut off at a quarter two to get ready to, to watch the premiere. Um, 24 year gap. Well, you know, Jamie, I, I wonder if we don't already, we haven't already found a way to kill the disease, disease old age. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm hoping it's kind of late for me, but Adam, God, thank you. Jeez, thank you so much. Wow. ETs live long, much longer than humans. Well, according... Um, oh, Dana, you see your son. That's that's wonderful. Um, according to science, we should live much longer than we are. And we probably would, too, if we weren't eating the processed foods that, uh, that the food industry keeps telling us is good for us, like meat and dairy. It's supposed to be really good for you. So are cigarettes, they told us at one time. But if you actually research food and what they're doing to us with the food... Um, you know, Mary and I have been uh, plant-based uh, vegans for three years. I went from having diabetes to not having diabetes. I went from needing gum surgery to not needing gum surgery. I, so many things improved, not to mention that my blood work is 100% at 72. Um, because we cook all our food and we eat fresh foods and uh, we rarely, rarely ever have anything processed. If we do, it's a, a vegan TV dinner because we're, we're short on time. So uh, it really makes a difference. Look into it. Research it. The science is there. And people that have been eating that way live well into their hundreds. And they also keep very busy. They also question everything. They have passions. They have hobbies. They work in the garden. It's just, it's amazing. Poncho, thank you very, very much. Thank you very, very much. I really, you guys, thank you. Um, so all these things are really important to longer life. We still won't live as long as the grays, but through DNA science, RNA science, we should be able to beat this and live hundreds of years instead of a hundred and something years. But you know what? I know all kinds of people that are living well into their nineties because they, they have taken care of themselves. They exercise every day. They, they have passions for hobbies and, and things. They keep busy, they keep working and they eat right. And they're fit. They're not even close to a walker at 97. They're not close to a walker. They're just like you or I. Yeah. They look older than we do. <laughs> But they're fine and it's you know it's up here and it's it's taking care of yourself so which i never did when i was in hollywood working in the studio system i was making gobs of money and i was young and i'm stupid and i was i was doing things i shouldn't be doing staying all night out of parties and doing things i shouldn't be doing and then going three hours later to the set and working a 12-hour day and then doing it all over again it's a miracle i'm still alive i must have caught it just in the nick of the time good time so, well, I, I yeah, uh, Mr. Osboss, um, yeah, we we stopped no fish either for us, but that's that's okay, you know. Um, everybody's got their own system and, um, and just fish, so it does make a huge difference. Oh, cat skin, cat, cat cans, thank you so much. The likes do help. Evidently, they really do. 
G. Oh, Jill. Thanks for checking in. Oh, did I missing anybody? See, I'm I'm keeping up with you guys tonight because this this is about you, not about a, a guest that we have on and all that stuff. So I can I can uh, Donna Stevens. Hi. Oh, well, hi, Donna Stevens. Thanks for uh, checking in here. We're talking about all kinds of stuff, and I'm pontificating and answering questions. And because this is the pre-show, the pre-show before the premiere tonight at six o'clock, which is our number eight, the eighth episode already of of breaking the silence. Um, amazing! And so I'm working on number nine right now. You know, number nine, which again, it's going to be. There's there's a lot of short experiences that I've had, like one when I woke up one night and I walked into the kitchen and ran into something really unusual. Another night when I woke up to a UFO uh, flying out, I could see it flying in the sky outside my window and an F-16 jet was chasing it. I knew it was, well, it's either an F-16 or an F-18. Being that I'm an aviator, I, I know the sounds of the engines. And I know what they have at Point Magoo. And, and that was really amazing. I'm going to reenact that. Um, there's a few others like that. that They're short bits. So I will take the short ones and do two or three of them within a 10 to 15 minute show. Um, and it keeps it moving. It keeps it lively. It keeps it entertaining. At the same time, you're able to see and experience some of the things I experienced by, by using my abilities to work within visual effects as I did professionally in Hollywood for many years. It gives me an advantage. I want to do more drawings and more artwork as well because I really miss doing it. And, you know, all the digital work is really great, but there's nothing like sitting down and, and taking a black piece of paper and some colored pencils and some chalks and, and sometimes acrylics and doing the paintings that I have done in the past. Uh, people seem to really like them. I do, and I'm going to put a book out very soon of all the art I did during the 90s, and then I'll do a new one. And also um, what's called sort of an illustrated book, like a comic book that will have uh, some of my experiences and other people's experiences too. Gee, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's very, very sweet. Um, and I don't know, I think, I enjoy having a book in my hand and I enjoy books that are illustrated and I love looking at the art. I don't know how you guys feel about that, but I, I'm going to test with the first book and see how well it does. And, uh, you know, it's not about making the money as much as it is getting the art out there. Well, the money helps. It does because we want to keep this going. And, uh, so, uh, well, if, Believe me, it, it, Jill, it really helps, okay? It doesn't matter about the amount. It's the love. <laughs> it's really appreciated. Very much so. Because every little bit helps. And it keeps the show going, so. Uh, are there any, any of... Are any of you shown symbols or written languages that are not familiar? I remember seeing them back. Well, oh, thank you, Adam. I remember seeing them and doing drawings of what I saw, the symbols. And um, there was a lot of dots and lines and curls. Um, and I remember seeing it inside the craft. And for a long time, it kept going through my mind. I kept drawing it down. Unfortunately, in the flood, I think all my books from the 90s, that Yvonne had me keep record of uh, when I'd have an experience, she'd have me immediately write down everything I could remember and illustrate it as much as I could. And unfortunately, I, I think I will find out soon as I go through the books that have been packed away. I think they were destroyed and they're gone. And it's really heartbreaking because I really wanted to do something with those and uh, put them in print so you could all see them. But maybe they, they're there still. I, I, I'll find out. Maybe tomorrow even because I'm going to go through some of the books. Um, I'm usually shown the Earth from a vantage point of their spacecraft. Pancho, I have that has happened to me too. Um, they know I really like that, and I will be just left at a window and just 
left alone to stand there and look out. And it's just, you know how the stars look at night when you go to the darkest place that you can find on the earth nearest you and up on top of a mountain away from the city lights? Well, then magnify that about another hundred times when you are in the, you're in the dark up there, not, you know, on the dark side of the earth and there's no moon. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. You're just surrounded by stars. You're immersed in them and you, you were born from those stars those stars that so many people here on earth never think about, never notice, or give the time of day. It's unfathomable to me. And this is part of the process that we need to work on. We need to get people to look at the stars again and realize where they come from and where they are. Even that will change how their perspective is on themselves and on the planet and everyone else. I'm trying to look at, uh, see, okay, you guys are talking to on yourselves here. That's good. And there's a word symbol st stamp, like a branding mark on my leg. Over the bruise, there's a bunch of little symbols. Well, that, you know, cat, I call it cat for short. <laughs> um, that, that sounds really familiar, what you're describing. You know, I would love to have some of you on the live stream. I know you're not in L.A., you're not close by, you can't come in front of the camera. But the only problem is, is I think a lot of you do want to use your real names. And so it would be, I don't know what we would do to uh, disguise you or maybe you would just be in the dark. Uh, we'd see you could backlight yourself, but if you're open to that, um, I'm noticing that you know, uh, Kat, you have a lot of things to talk about, and many of you do. Uh, yes, stars and night vision. The universe is a living, conscious thing, and we wonder if there is life out there. And <laughs> <laughs> you, you got it, you know. And if you really want to warp somebody's brain, you know, you're talking to someone and, and, and ask them what the nearest star is. I, I do that all the time. Mary's going, oh, God, here we go with that again. But it's true. You, you'll you say, at best, you might get, it's Alpha Centauri. <laughs> and then when they realize that our own sun is a star, boy, you get to see the light bulb go on. So you need to do that to people because that helps, too. Every time, and I've done it several times, and they thank you for it. They go, oh, my God, I lived my whole life and never realized that our sun was a star, like the other stars I see at night, which means then they get it. Oh, so they could have planets, too. And if they have planets, then there could be intelligent life there. Boy, that's a beginning. That's a start. And we need to shift that consciousness today. And we just need to move into that consciousness, very much so, because that will start to heal I, I believe, because we get the support of the hardworking public to think about these things and become conscious of it, and then they're not going to listen to the bad guys as much. They'll come, become self-empowered. That one points at the sun. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you can sense when they're around, even when you can't see them because you become sensitive to their energy pattern. Plus when you detect them, you see them in your mind's eye. Yes. You know, I was here, Pancho. Um, I was here at the studio. This was towards the end. And as we're laying on the cot still, we're staying here until our house was done. And I closed my eyes to go to sleep and vividly like, I used to develop photographs in a lab. I used to do my own photography, my own developing and, and film and printing. I would see these grays materialize that way. And but it wasn't like imagination and it was it was real solid image that was black around them, but I could see them and the eyes gleaming. They were looking at me and they were very much alive. And I just 
laid there is, and I got so excited it stopped. <laughs> that that's a problem when that happens. And but it, but for that moment it was amazing. I got such a good look at them, and they're very close to my drawings. That now I saw a few little things that that I want to add to the work I've been doing. But um, yeah. Uh, funny, I was asking about Beetlejuice, the movie. Uh, my longtime friend and ex-girlfriend did the makeup for that movie. B. Neal. Same, same spelling. Um, I think, I think you have to be awakened to sense them. Yeah, well, that speaks volumes because when we were kids, we we were very much awake. You know, we were open to everything. We looked at the stars, we saw ghosts, we sensed things, and then later on, the adults said, "No, you didn't. That's all BS. Get on with your life. Stop asking so many questions because they're a burden to others." That's a line from the prisoner, and I know there's some people here that are. Patrick McGowan fans and watch The Prisoner. That show had a lot to say, too. So, uh, yeah. come on, I know some of you. Adam, you, you must have seen The Prisoner, right? I will not be pushed, stamped, filed, indexed, briefed, debriefed, or numbered. My life is my own. Love Patrick McGowan, love that show. And it had kind of a sense about it, sort of a visitor sense about it. I never got to meet him. I got to meet so many people in Hollywood, and he's one that got away. The little ones are scary too. Well, you know, <laughs> yeah, they, yeah, sure. Uh, you get used to it, sort of. We've got about five minutes or so left. around everywhere all the time watching yeah well it certainly feels that way you know then there's the whole implant thing and i, I really question the implants because um no i mean do they really need to use them oh and bless you yeah i did too and that car the lotus super seven out of all the sports cars i've had i've never had one of those i've been dying to own one it's out of my reach right now, but I had a dream the other night that I had one. And my dreams come true sometimes, so I'm hoping. That, that's a bucket list thing. I love my Fiat. It's very much the same kind of car in every way, but it's like it's not that car. So maybe one day. I got a lovely slot car of one, though. In fact, I got two slot cars of it. No, I didn't. But my good friend, uh, Rick Stratton, wonderful human being, did do the work on the TV show V, the original show. Yes. Uh, I was working on something else, so I couldn't work on it. I wish I had, though, because it would have been really neat. And it's an interesting show when you really think about it, too. <laughs> no, no, he was talking about V, I think. Well, I guess. I mean, they were weather balloons. <laughs> but... They were they were they were scary, but I try not to look at you know how cheesy things. I mean, they look at Star Trek, the, the original series. I mean, you look at it now; it, it talk about cheesy. Um, Rick and I, Rick Rick Stratton and I, uh, have been longtime friends. We we first met at Don Post Studios. Yeah, before I even was in the business, I was sculpting and painting and making molds for Don Post Senior and Junior. That's how far back I go. Amazing. I knew Vern Langdon. I worked for John Chambers, the man who created the Planet of the Apes makeup. Uh, we, we became friends. Fred Phillips, who did Our Limits in the um, original Star Trek series. That's how I ended up working on Star Trek TV show, is because of Fred. So, a lot of history there. And I'm getting an alert. It's a weather alert. Well, Sure, it'll be fine. Used to like that. I think, well, I've got one in my ear like Whitley has. It moves. It gets hot. 
it hurts sometimes. And I have a vague memory how it was put in there. And I don't want to have it removed because it may be giving me some of the abilities I have. Whitley believes that's the case. Um, and I know it's in my ear. In fact, as I talk about it, I'm feeling it right now. It's like it knows. I'll try to get a picture of it if it'll show up. Okay, we're at 5.45 and uh, in a few minutes here. If you guys have any other questions you'd like to ask, now's the time to ask them because I got to get uh, ready for that. Yeah, well, the one in the ear is just odd. It's odd that Whitley and I both have one in the same location on the same ear, and or maybe it isn't odd. Um, but he we tried to. I tried to show him it, and he went to feel it, and it wasn't there. And I went and felt it, and it wasn't there. And and then as Mary and I are driving back from the event, uh, I felt this hotness, and it hurt, and, it, and then it was right back again. And we know his move, so. Yours is heating up too, huh? Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Steve, are the visitors still visiting you? Yes. Yes, they are. Yes. Okay. And this, I'll close on this. The Invaders. I loved it. The music gave me the chills. Um, I loved that show, and I felt like I had some connection with it. I ended up working for a man named Larry Cohen. I did six movies for him when we became friends until he passed just a couple of years ago. I guess it's been, maybe it's been three now. And we were working together on something and he was the creator of the invaders. He had the movie rights to it and he wanted to make a movie and he wanted me to be involved. And I was so excited about it, but he was, he was fighting cancer and sadly, um, we were working on it right up to the last two weeks of his life and he passed. Um, and so any chance of doing that went away with him. So, but, uh, he's on the wall looking at me right now to Steve Neal, monster maker extraordinaire. It's a poster he signed. I made a movie about him. So, uh, yeah, but the invaders was great and it really holds up and it's, um, it wasn't slapstick. It was a very serious show, and that's what I liked about it. So much of the things back in those days, Boys Upon the Sea, Lost in Space, Batman, they're all slapstick and goofy, and that here that show was dead serious. It was really cool. So, so let's go watch Jim Lowe spill his guts, and, uh, and uh, we'll see you in a chat. Okay. Love you guys a whole bunch. And thank you so much for the support tonight and, uh, and the love. And I look forward to seeing you again really soon. Um, and that will be next week. Have a great night. And enjoy the show.